G'day folks, well this is my standard Dodi Rhombus solve and this is going to be probably fairly long because it's a pretty involved puzzle, particularly if we include jumbling in it, which we should. So what I'm going to do here is go through a decent scramble, as far as I can see, and particularly with, this, with the jumbling and shape shifting part of that, because it's not easy to do to get a decent scramble there. I'm then going to show how I return to cube shape and probably spend a reasonable amount of time doing that because again it's not simple and then proceed through the remainder of the solve once that's done. So the first thing we want to do is start scrambling and initially what you'll do is just do a whole bunch of 180 degree turns and with all these techniques there's no stipulation as to how long you should do it for because we've got really three or four things that we're going to be doing and you'll mix all these together by the end anyway. Next thing we could do is do some jumbling of the edges. However, probably it makes more sense to split the edges first. So I'm going to show you two edge splitting algorithms. They're also edge joining algorithms. They are equivalent. So it doesn't really matter which one of these you do. Let me show you the first one. And hold the puzzle like this and we can split these two on the side. And what we want to do is turn this to there bring the front face across, bring the back face across, and you'll see now we've got these two bits. We can spin that around, undo this stuff, and you can see very clearly those two edges have been split. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, I'll do it over here somewhere, is you can essentially, let's say that I want to split these two here. What I would do, this is where the two are not on the same orbit. So clearly that one and that one are on different orbits. If I bring this down so that it's onto the same orbit, and then I'm going to turn it round. So this is now pointing down to that face there. What I want to do is get another one of these sitting here. The way that I do that is move this left face down. There's the bit that's pointing. I can now turn that 180. Now I have both these bits on that face. I can spin the face, undo all the stuff I did to get it there. And voila, those two are split as well. So I say that they're equivalent because they are essentially achieving the same thing. And what I mean by that is if you, let's say that you had this orange purple and the pink yellow. At the moment, they're in different orbits. And you'll notice that if I do this, the orange comes onto this yellow face. So just keep that in mind. The orange comes onto the yellow face. I'm going to essentially split and swap these things. What if I got this into the same orbit as the pink yellow? Well, to do that, I'd have to swap it with something else on this orbit. So let's have a look, probably something like this one here. I'm going to bring the orange purple into the same orbit as the pink yellow, it's now in that same orbit. So I'll move it over and what you'll notice now is when I turned it down like this, the orange was here. Now that it's in the same orbit, the orange is here. What that means is they are gonna split in exactly the same way. So whether I decide to move a piece to be on the same orbit as something else, or whether I just do that second splitting algorithm makes no difference. It will still split and join in the same way. So take your pick, do one, do both, doesn't matter. You've got to do a heap of that. Let's do some more. And it's always a really good idea, if you can, to jumble unsplit edges with split edges just to get uh, as good a scramble as you can get. So you're not just always having the same pieces swapped with each other. As you go on, you can get to a point where some of them are split, some are not. You can also, and this is the other thing that we can do, is just jumble the edges, whether they're split or not, into different orbits. So, for example, I could say, well, this blue-red, I'm going to swap it with this white-purple. So to do that, we bring both of them to the same face. 180 turn and put that back. And at the moment, we just want to keep everything non-shape-shifted. So we can now swap the white purple and the red yellow in the same sort of manner. And eventually you'll get to this point where you've got all the edges split, you've been jumbling them across orbits and 
it's looking sort of like this. Well, it's now time to do a bit of shape shifting. And what I'd advise you not to do is to straight away just go and do the most standard kind, which will get you two of these things. I'm going to call these things pencils because to me, they look like pencils. There's the base, there's the top of the pencil. The reason I'd advise not to do that so soon is because it kind of uses up quite a bit of the puzzle. And what I want to do is see if I can get little bits jumbled and group them onto the same area, which will free up other bits to try and jumble some more stuff. Now this is a very difficult process and it will take a little bit of time if you want to do it properly. And there's a lot of trial and error in just seeing how much you can get jumbled. And even when you have quite a bit jumbled, the, the puzzle's not necessarily going to look like an absolute mess. So let me take you through a couple of things that I might do to start off. The first thing that I might do is try and twist this little bit in its position. And to do that, I'm going to do the reverse of an algorithm that I'll be showing you later when we look at returning to cube shape. So for example, I'll, I'll just perform it now and you'll see it later properly. And you can see that what that's done is just essentially twist that around. So it's like that. And what I like about this is it's only affected that little bit. Now it has created a hole and these holes are really annoying and they're pretty much unavoidable if you're going to do a good jumbling shape shifting scramble. So I'll leave that there. And what I'm next going to do is do something else such as, and I'm just debating whether to do it here or further away. I probably should do it further away. It's a little hard to know. I'm going to pretend that I'm about to do this splitting out, but instead of swapping the two bits, I'm just going to grab that one there, give it a spin, and put this face back somewhere. Now, ideally, what I'd like to do is get these bits near that bit. That's the kind of the goal of this thing. So I would see perhaps I can move that around and bring that up there. That's not too bad. They're sort of on the same face. And you can you'll get the idea really quickly as to why I'm trying to do this. If I could, I would somehow have something else sitting here because then I've only got this stuff here and I've still got all this stuff to work with to try and jumble things. So I would jump over here somewhere and perhaps do that again, perhaps do something else. Here's something that I do like doing. It's just a simple down, down, up, up, and it will create this stuff. Now, if I can now spin that around, that puts that stuff over this region again. Notice that I'm not trying to, at this point, I'm not trying to sort of move the axes so that they're wrong like that. I'm keeping everything as it is so that I can do as much jumbling and shape shifting as possible. I really like what's going on here in terms of grouping this stuff together. Still got a lot of space over here to try and do some more things with. So I'll perhaps do something else. It gets a little bit trickier now because I was going to turn this face, but I can't. I can't even turn that face as well. And this is why it is so difficult to jumble well. And you might say, well, just turn this face around. I can't because that's blocked. So what I could try is temporarily putting that there. Well, oh, and that's a, you just heard that and I did want to talk about that in this solve. What's happened there is that this piece has pushed past this piece and it should not. And you'll, you'll fairly easily tell because it'll have a sound like that and it will feel like you're just gently pushing where you shouldn't go. And if that happens, you just go straight back. It is not supposed to go there. And even though you can make it go there, you shouldn't. So you can just hear the little click there and now it's sort of jammed and I have to get in there and do that. So that's one of the other issues that you've got to be aware of. I don't even know what I was trying to do there now that that's happened because it's blocked my concentration. So potentially I still would like everything to be grouped where it should be. I think I'll move this if I can. That's fine. Move that back to there. That's probably where it was and continue to see if I can get something else done. I think this is where I was because I was trying to turn this around. Let's, instead of that, 
potentially try, it's actually very, very difficult to see what I can do, which is not just going to make it impossible to continue doing little bits of shape shifting. I might have to now get to the point of saying, well, it's time to do whatever I can. Move bits on, potentially, something like, will that move? That will not move. And remember, this is still the scrambling stage. And this is the sort of thing that you have to do if you want to get a decent shape-shifted puzzle before you start returning to cube shape. Cube shape, puzzle shape, rhombic dodecahedral shape. What if I turn, temporarily I turn that Now this is something that now I could look at doing because I can turn that to that position, possibly turn this. And continue to bring that around. And I reckon at this point, all I'm trying to do is do whatever I can to continue jumbling them and shape shifting them. Does that move? No. Before you know it, you will get to a point where there's only one, maybe two faces that you can turn because there's so much blockage. And I think we're reasonably close to that point. What I might do is put that over there. Can't turn that. Can I turn this one? No, because that's blocked. I can turn that face. I'd like to turn that around, but I can't because of this blockage. And I can't turn that because of this blockage. And I can't turn that because of this blockage. And I can't turn that. Well, you're starting to get the picture. So I reckon at this point, this is pretty close to as best I can do for this particular scramble. And I would now just say, well, whatever I can turn to make things harder, I will. But I might be at the end of my tether here. Okay, so that's for this particular scramble, I reckon that's as good as I can get done. And if you just pick this up and had a look at it, you'd be going, yeah, that's fairly jumbled, fairly shape shifted. So now we come to the part of returning to puzzle shape, to correct puzzle shape. The first thing that we want to do here is just keep in mind what the centers are supposed to look like on a solved puzzle. And for example, if I look at it's a good one to look at this this four colored corner here what you'll notice is that there's one two three four centers surrounding that each of these centers has it sort of points if you like so it's got the longer diagonal there pointing towards the corner that one points towards that corner the yellow one here also points you'll notice that this green one doesn't it's got the shorter diagonal pointing towards the corner that's a problem. So the first thing that I would be doing would be to fix that up. Now, I can't turn that at the moment because something else is blocking it. So I've got to see what else is blocking it. In this case, I think it's just a matter of turning that blue and then I can turn the green face. So now that is pointing correctly towards this corner if it was there. So I want four of these pointing towards the corner. I then move up. This next one should be pointing horizontally. If I continue, I've got another four, and those four should all be pointing towards the center. I move up, that one should be horizontal. I've got two centers left, and the way that I tell whether they are correctly oriented is I just hold it like this, so this spot is right in the middle, and look to the side. That's pointing vertically, that's correct. That's pointing vertically, that's correct. So I now know that everything is aligned correctly on, I guess, its axes. What I'll do now is start thinking about different things that I could do. And I want to show you a few examples of a few things that I've come across. By no means exhaustive, by no means this is all you need to know. But a lot of people say that getting things back to puzzle shape is intuitive. And while I kind of agree with that, I also think, well, it can't just be intuitive. There's got to be some kind of method to the madness. So let me show you a few little things that I've come across as to how to approach something like this. 
Well, the first and simplest situation, and this is what we're really looking for the whole time, is that we have two of these pencils, as I'm calling them, on different orbits. And I know they're on different orbits. If they were on the same orbit, one would be here, one would be here, and I'd be able to turn them on the same face. But I can't do that. If I turn, if I try and turn this face, I mean, yes, I can turn them, but it doesn't bring that whole pencil. So this is the simplest case, and all you need to do is turn one of them onto the other face so the pencils are pointing in the same direction, like that. Rotate the face and undo. Well, this situation, we've got two pencils and they are on the same orbit. So it doesn't matter if they're pointing in the same direction or not. I could move that over there and you see they're opposite directions, but they're in the same orbit. So to deal with this, we want to get one of them into a different orbit. So what I'll do here is swap the blue, yellow and this one. And that brings the two pencils into a different orbit. And now that that's done, we can do what we did in that first situation. What we've got here is the top half of a pencil pointing upwards across a face. And we've got what I'm calling a hole sitting here adjacent to it. So what I want to do is turn the hole around that upper face towards that top half and I'll know where I need to stop because it'll line up here. I then want to bring this left face around. Now I've got the top half opposite where it needs to join. So I give it a twist and lock it down. Well this situation looks pretty tricky but it's very simple to, to deal with. It only requires two faces being turned. What you've got is a couple of pencil tops sticking out and a bottom half over here or a hole over here and they're all on the same face. Whichever face you think of, the right face, the left face, whatever, they're all on the same face. And so what you do is you turn the pencil tops around towards the hole to begin with and then you turn this other face here, whatever it is, up and then undo, undo. Now, if I just set up for that again, you'll see that this is nothing more than an edge piece series with two faces there. So again, if I had it like this, I've got to turn that around to there. So I'm going down, down, up, up. Well, this is a really interesting case and it bamboozled me for quite a while. I thought maybe I've done some fudging or something and accidentally got it in this position, but it's perfectly legal and it's this single twisted, I guess you'd call it, pencil top sitting over here. So the way that I've come up with to deal with it is to have it at up back left and at up front left to have this three colored corner. So what we want to do here is to turn the left face one stop. So in notation, this would be L plus, and then I want to do a front two. And what I mean by that is 180 degrees. So technically this would be front plus 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 because that's the first stop that's the second stop, that's the third stop. So I'm gonna call it F2, and then we undo that L plus with an L minus, and then undo the F2 with an F2. We then almost repeat the same thing. So now we need to do an L plus, and instead of doing an F2, we wanna do F double plus. So one stop, two stops, and then left minus, and then F minus, minus. So it looks crazy, but that's the kind of thing that if you can get these faces free, that you can do to solve that. All right, well, I want to show you the case of having a single pencil remaining. And what I mean by that is you can see that this belongs here and this corner belongs up here. So it's, it's not two pencils that you can easily flatten together. It's just a single one. There are essentially three cases here. And what I mean by that is it all depends on what's happening down here. So if I hold it so that the pencil is pointing upwards like that, I also want to look at the exposed core. And that exposed core is pointing in the same direction as the pencil. That's what we want. So if that happens, I don't mind saying this took me an awful long time to figure out what to do, but it is quite a simple algorithm when you think about what's happening. And here it is. I want to turn the left face or the down left face like that. I then want to rotate the up left face 180 degrees 
and then return that down left face. I then want to do exactly the same thing over on the right hand side. That's it. And what that's achieved, you can see, is two pencils now, which are on different orbits, which is the simplest thing we can have because we just move one of them onto the same orbit, spin it around, and we are finished. So that's the way to deal with a pencil that's out of place when you have the exposed core pointing in the same direction as the pencil. Well, this next case, you can see the pencil is pointing upwards that corner is joined to everything. It looks more like an actual pencil. So the exposed core is now pointing downwards. You can see there's kind of like an arrow there going downwards. So when you come across this, there's basically four extra moves before you do the fix. The first one is to turn this top face 180 degrees to separate that part. Then we want to move this hole around to where that is. So we just turn one face, two face, three face, and now you can see the exposed core is pointing in the same direction. So we now go ahead and do the same thing. And that's all done. Well, the third case is where the pencil is pointing upwards, but you can see the exposed core is pointing horizontally. It's pointing sideways. So it doesn't really matter if it's pointing to the left or the right, the issue is it's also not pointing in the direction of this pencil. So what we want to do there is turn this face 180 degrees to put that over there. We now want to essentially jumble this part to a different orbit. So I'm going to bring this down to here. I'm going to bring this part up onto this same face. This will jumble it to a different orbit. And then move that back, put this hole into position and if I continue turning the hole, we will see that it is now exactly where we want it to be, and we're now ready to carry out the same algorithm. And once again, we have dealt with that single pencil. So with all of those in mind, what we now do is just attempt to start thinking, well, is there anything obvious that I can deal with? And the first thing that I would try and do is look for a couple of pencils that are together that I might be able to jumble back into place. And this, there is essentially, it's a two-headed pencil if you like. If I could get that onto this face, I could turn this face and jumble those two. However, it's not that simple because I don't think I can turn this face because of this hole here. So I would perhaps attempt, could I do that? No, because it's blocked here, that's blocked. And before I know it, I've actually lost where I was. So I'll abandon that and say, what about this one? This looks a little bit better because I don't know that there's any blockage here. So I would grab that, put it onto the face, turn that around and straight away, we've freed up a little bit of the puzzle, which is really nice. So anything like that, I'll take instantly. Now it actually looks quite, now it looks quite a bit better already because just from doing those two things. So sometimes you can do things and they don't appear to make stuff look better. Other times it really opens stuff up quite well. Here's another couple where if I could get this one onto the face, it might help me. That's in the way. So I'll temporarily turn that around and just see if that allows me to do what I need to do. And I think it does, that's good. Now I've sort of run out of long pencils, so now I've got to look at other methods. And so I would, at this point, I would put that aside so it's just somewhere else. And I might even take that off to separate the little pencil top there. I've got a couple of pencil tops. I've got a hole here. And so what I wouldn't mind seeing is if it's possible to get this hole over to this pencil top on that face or vice versa and see if it is possible to join them. So I might do that. We have to turn that differently and possibly turn that around to there. So this is the face that I'm interested in. That looks a little bit better. 
This I'm going to ignore for a little bit and turn that hole around to there. Now, what I'd initially try is just turning this up and having a look what happens. That's not going to be helpful. What about this one? If I could turn that around, you can see it does make a pencil, but there's nowhere for me to go here. I can't turn it like that and I can't turn it like that. So I'll turn it around a little bit more. Does that help? No, that doesn't seem to be helping doing that. So the next thing that I would try is while that is sitting there, I would possibly, possibly, and this is where it becomes a little bit tricky to know exactly what to do. I can turn that face initially to there. Does that give me anything to play with? Not really. So at this point, I might say, hmm, that's not really helping me. Let's try rotating this around and seeing if I can do something similar on a different face or a different region. Now, I think this might be jutting against that one, that is. So I've got to get that out of the way. I can initially move it there, but I want to turn it over to there, so that's no good. That's at least out of the way. Let's turn this up here. And this could be the exact same problem that I just had. Who knows? That's not going to turn where I need it. So the next thing there. Next thing there. I'm just thinking this through. Possibly. Okay, does that help? That might be perfect. And that's brilliant because that has now made, not only sort of made a pencil, but that's where it should be. If I turn this face, I've got a single pencil there, and that's good. Now, what about this one? This appears to be one of those rotated in place parts here. So, what I might do is now, and it, you can tell it's looking a lot better, that's a single pencil and I want to deal with this on its own. So I'm going to just store that over there. And we now have this single twisted, I'm going to call it a corner, it's more than a corner, but you know what I mean. This is where we can apply that algorithm that I showed earlier to fix something like this. And so let's just work our way through that. It was a left plus and then a front two and then a left minus, and then a front two, and then we had a left plus, and a front double plus, and then a left minus, and a front double minus. So if that is in that position, great. You can use that, and it's looking good. Right, we now come down to the single pencil scenario, so where it's kind of it's not where it should be. It's, it's as though it's reversed like that. Now you can get a few options here. The option we have is where the pencil is pointing up and the exposed core here is pointing downwards. So what I want to do is change that so that I have the exposed core pointing in the same direction as the pencil. So if it's pointing downwards, we know that what we've got to do is turn that top face 180 degrees and then just rotate the hole around three faces until it is at the bottom of the pencil. And now that exposed core is pointing in the same direction as the pencil. And we are now able to do the algorithm which will deal with this single pencil. So here we go. Now we've created a pencil here, a pencil here on different orbits. And so this is pretty much as simple as it gets to deal with those. And we have now returned to puzzle shape. Well, the next stage of the solve is to reduce these edges, to reduce the split edges. Now that it's back to puzzle shape, we've got to join, for example, the purple white large piece here with the other purple white piece. Now there are essentially three 
techniques that you need to know. Really, you could say there's two. Now, let me explain. The first thing is how do we join these edges if we don't have inverted edges? Now, I'm going to show you an example of that now. So I will find, I'll start with some white pieces and just see what happens. So with the white blue here, let me find the other white blue piece. Oh, there it is. I'm going to bring that closer and we'll just see we'll just see what is going on here. So these are not in the same orbit. That's the first thing. So I can't, for example, I don't currently have the ability to put the white blue onto this face without shape shifting it. However, if I turn it onto the face, I notice that the white color does not match the blue color. That's perfect for what I need to do. I can use my second splitting algorithm to join these pieces. And remember I said at the start, it is a splitting and joining algorithm. So I went through those in the scrambling stage. Just to show you that those algorithms are essentially the same, I will carry out the second splitting algorithm now to join the white blue pieces. So there's the white blue edge. I spin this around and its other piece joins perfectly where I need it to join. Put them back and all is well. I'm just going to undo that now and show you what would happen if we use the first splitting algorithm. So here we are back again to that same starting point. And let's say that I wanted to put this white blue piece onto the same orbit as this white blue piece. So I'm following this around and I've got to get it over to anything, say, here. So that piece over there is on the same orbit. So I'm going to, the orange blue. I'm going to jumble with this white blue to get it to the same orbit. So I'll move that up there, move the orange blue down there, spin it around, undo, undo. This white blue piece, I can guarantee, is now on the same orbit as this one. So let's put it on the same face. What you'll notice with the face, now that I've put them in the same orbit, is that the whites are the same color. The same color is on that face. So this is why this is equivalent to the second splitting algorithm. So now I can use the first splitting algorithm if I want. So I will turn this around, put that on there, put that on there, spin. And here comes the white blue piece, which is going to spin around to join with its correct counterpart. So that's why I wanted to show you that both of those splitting algorithms are essentially the same thing. It's just whether the piece is on the same orbit or not. So that's what you want to do as much as you can. You find pieces that will work like that. But now I want to show you the other thing that's required because if you've done a good scramble and shape shifting journey, you will find that there are some pieces that do not behave in the way they should. I'm going to have a quick look and see if I can find a piece like that. Okay, and here we've got an example of exactly that. We've got these orange blue pieces that need to be joined. Now you'll see that at the moment they are on the same orbit, but the colors of the stickers do not match. So you might think, oh, well, I need to get them onto a different orbit here. So let's say that I move this orange blue off to a different orbit. I'll move it using this face. So now it's not on the same orbit. I come back and have a look and notice that, yep, the orange blue is there. This one's here. I could turn this down and now the colors are the same. Well, that's no good because in order for this one to work, those colors must be different. So it doesn't matter what I do here. I'm not going to be able to pair these pieces correctly. This is where I need the algorithm for an inverted edge. That's what's essentially happened here. And it will only happen if you do a good jumbling shape shifting scramble. This orange blue edge needs to be flipped around so it'll be pointing in the right direction. So what I'm going to do here is forget that there might be another edge. Ideally, you would do this with two. They're always going to come in pairs. So I'm not concerned about the other one. I'm going to show you how we do this. And you'll be very happy to know that essentially it is the same as dealing with a single inverted pencil that we looked at earlier. So the first thing to do is you're always dealing with the smaller part of the edge. So I don't, I don't care about this bit. That's the larger part. I care about this bit here. I'm going to jumble this bit with some other edge. At the moment, I don't really care what the other edge is because I'm just demonstrating how this works. 
So I'll jumble this with this one here and I want to shape shift it. So I just turn it down onto a face so that I end up with two pencils. And remember I said ideally you'd be doing this on two at a time. So ordinarily this blue yellow one would need to be inverted as well. So I've now got two pencils. What I want to do is deal with each one of these separately and do the exact same fix for a single pencil. So forget that that's there. If that's all I had, what would I do? Well, remembering back, we know that we'd have to turn that face and then bring the hole around by turning it on three faces so that the exposed part was pointing in the same direction as the pencil. And then we could carry out this algorithm. Now, for the first one, you'll notice that's blocking this face. So we've just hide that down there temporarily. So let's carry this out. Remember, it's the orange blue that I'm interested in flipping. So turn it up to there, rotate, put it back, do the same on the right face, turn it up to there, get everything aligned, rotate, turn it back. And now, of course, we've got these two pencils that we can happily jumble as we need to. Now that leaves us another one. So just for the sake of getting this done, I'm going to do exactly the same thing and do it with this pencil, even though I don't care about the blue yellow. So now we're ready. Okay, now it was the blue orange that was the one we were interested in. So let's have a look what's happened now. Here's one of the blue orange pieces. Where's the other one that we've just inverted? Keeping my finger on one of them because it's always impossible to find the other one. And it's normally right next to it. Oh, look, oh, look at that. Unbelievable. Okay. Let's have a look. Now these are clearly not on the same orbit, so let's see what happens now. If I hold this here, notice now that when I bring this piece down onto the same orbit as the other piece, the colours do not match. That's exactly what I need to do the second splitting algorithm. But let's say you wanted to do the first. Well, you'll change this orbit. Don't have to, of course, but let's change the orbit to match another piece on this same orbit. Is that simple enough? Yes, it is. So we'll put the two pieces on the same orbit now. And when I bring them together, you'll notice magically those two colors match. That's exactly what I need. So now I'm ready to join these pieces using this first splitting algorithm, which of course is also a joining algorithm. So I hope that all makes sense in terms of what you have to do if the two splitting joining algorithms that are the workhorses do not work. It means you've got an inverted edge and you've got to do something to deal with that edge. And the method that I've shown for dealing with a single inverted pencil is what will do the job there. So from here on, you're just doing all the rest of the edges. I'm going to cut back in with the last two or three. All right, we're down to the last three of these edges. We've got the red, pink, the green, yellow. And over here, you'll see we've got the green, blue, which is completely inverted. So let's try and take care of one of these other ones. And I notice here that if I turn this red, pink piece onto the same orbit as the other piece, it's the opposite color. That's perfect. That means that I can go and join these. And you can see very clearly there, they are now joined. And now what's happened is we've got the green yellow, which is completely inverted. And we've got this green blue, which is also inverted. So you're never going to get one. You're always going to get a pair of these things. And so the only way we can fix this now is to use the inversion procedure or the inversion algorithm that we've seen before here for fixing a single pencil, essentially. What we want to do 
we jumble both of these together so we create the two pencils and we're going to fix one at a time. So, for example, let's see if I can move that one onto the same orbit, turn it around and bring it back. Now I've got those two pencils. These are the ones that I want to fix. So let's firstly fix this one. So we know that we've got to move that around and then bring the hole around three faces. And the reason for that, of course, is so that this is pointing in the same direction as that. We are now ready to fix this. So when we're done, this green yellow will have attached correctly to this green yellow. Now this is where it might be blocked, so I'll just put that out of the way. Now I can continue. And that's created the two pencils there, and quite clearly that is now dealt with. So I'll undo them. There's the first one. And now we do exactly the same thing on this one. So we'll turn that around and bring the hole around this direction. There's no need to move it sort of to the right. We can move it to the left. It will still land with the exposed core pointing upwards in the same direction as that pencil. So here we go. And once again, that has now successfully essentially inverted that blue-green small piece so that, what am I doing? I'm going to spin that around so that instead of being flipped, it is now correctly done. And I just included that to show what happens if you do get these edges at the end where they are with their own kind but wrongly oriented. And that's what you do. Well, that brings us to the solving the edges stage and we've just reduced all of these edges so we now treat this as a single edge what we need to do is to initially get all of the edges into their correct orbits we don't need to place them into their positions necessarily we just need them in their correct orbit so there are four orbits let's have a look at this white blue piece to determine if it's in the correct orbit we can follow along where it can go just with 180 degree turns so that means just following along here and seeing is there a white and a blue center there? You can see that purple yellow is obviously in the correct orbit, but the white blue is not. So we've got to find which orbit it's in. It goes there, so it's in this orbit here. So what that means is we now need to move the white blue piece to its correct orbit by turning any piece from its correct orbit onto a different face and turning the white blue piece onto that same face. So we're going to use the red face here so if I just turn it around like that, there's my white blue. I'm going to swap it with this orange gray. So I turn that onto the red face. I turn the orange gray onto the red face. 180 turns, undo those turns. You can see that white blue is not only in its orbit, but in its correct position. So I stress that I didn't have to use the piece in the white blue position. What you would generally do is get all the pieces in this orbit now. So we would go and see is blue green, blue light green, is that in this orbit? No, so it must be somewhere else. And we'll firstly find blue light green there. We just want to swap it with something and we'll see what can we take it out, what can we use to take it out of the orbit? So for example, if I wanted to swap it with this purple green. I would just check, is the purple green in its correct orbit? No. So I could use the purple green to take it out if I wanted to, or I could use this orange blue or this one here. So I might look at this blue green and bring it down to here and say, well, it's got to go into this orbit. So can I find a piece over here somewhere that I can also bring onto this face? That's normally the easiest way to do it. Bring it down to here, and well, that blue yellow can turn up to this face as well. So the blue yellow, that does not belong in this orbit because it goes here, so we're good to go. Now, as I said, the blue green is now in its correct orbit. It doesn't need to be solved. We would continue and say, so what's the next one? We had 
must have been this way, blue, white, blue, green, green, gray. It's not in the orbit, so it must be somewhere else, and it's right here. And we want to put that, we could say, so let's turn it down onto, in fact, we don't want to turn it onto this face because that's the face of the orbit. So I'd probably turn it onto perhaps this one here. So, oh, in fact, it was this piece here, wasn't it? So perhaps turn it onto this one. And the green gray, which belongs in this orbit, I could use the green purple. So if I turn that green gray down to here, the green purple, Now you can see that green gray. It's very clear to see that that'll go over here and that's in its correct orbit. So that one, that one's good. That one's good. The next one, gray blue. Not in its correct orbit. Must be somewhere else and it's here. So again, I'd say, well, can we, I don't really want to use that one. Let's see if I can bring it onto this face here to do the swap. Now the gray blue is this orbit here. So I would come around here and look for a piece in this region to bring onto this face because I'm going to be turning it onto the yellow face here to do the swap. I don't want to use that one. Don't want to use that one. Don't want to use that one. What about the orange blue? I could use the orange blue because that is not in the same orbit. So what I would do is give that a twist around to there so that I can now, I mean, it's not essential, but probably helps. I can now use this face and put the two pieces there. Now the grey blue, if I follow that around, is now in its correct orbit. So what do we start with? The white blue, the blue green's in, the green grey's in, the grey blue is in. I need blue green, as in light blue, dark green. I don't think I have that. That may be the last one that I need. That red pink clearly does not belong. So I'm going to try and get the red pink swapped with the blue green when I find it. Ah, right here, of course. So let's initially just turn that around somewhere else. And I'm going to have to put it. What is a sensible face to use? I think this pink face will work because that is not the orbit that it belongs in. I'm trying to get the blue green into this orbit here. So that red pink will be fine. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we've done one orbit. Now, what you can do if you want is just turn this first lot to try and solve the pieces just to see if it does if you've got all the pieces in there very simple and quick for the first one you can look around and say oh yep everything is joined as it should be not essential but at least you know it's good now what you want to do is continue that for the second orbit get the second orbit going and i will say i'll start the second orbit just by doing this yellow green piece here which i don't think is in the orbit so the yellow green because there is something you have to be careful of so there's the yellow green it goes here let us turn it onto this face here and it doesn't matter if i use this face because it's not going to take the pieces out of their orbit it's not going to take these pieces out of their orbit so that which one did i get going the yellow green there it is that's now in its orbit and in its position now if i was to then get let's say the green blue or any other piece what i've got to do is just be a little bit careful that sometimes if i turn it like that it's not going to bring these pieces out of the orbit but if you're trying to keep them solved you don't want to just do a single turn so let's do a couple more green pink there it is and i can can I swap it with the red yellow? Yes, I can. So I'll do that on the gray face again. No, I won't because the green pink is already on the gray face. So what I'll need to do is, let's have a look, possibly this blue face, green pink and that red yellow. Yep. So 
So green pink was the one I was trying to do. I can turn that around and you can see this is all I'm talking about. By doing that, I've just done a normal thing. Oh, hang on, I've swapped these two. Now, it really doesn't matter because you're not really aiming to solve these things until you've got all the pieces in their orbits, but just be aware of it. So I'm going to continue doing for this orbit and then for the third orbit, and we'll cut back in near the end of the third orbit to see what's what. Well, I've got the last of the pieces into the third orbit, and that means the fourth orbit must only contain its correct pieces as well. So now that that's happened, what we're going to do is go and solve each of the orbits. So I'll look at this one, which is kind of a little bit solved. I can turn that into place. With the first orbit, I can just turn the pieces directly into place. And if I follow that around, that's all done. I'll then move to this next orbit, which looks pretty good. And one of two things is going to happen. I'm going to be able to three cycle the pieces in, or I'm going to get a swap of two pieces. So for now, I just ignore that. I'll leave it there. I can't do anything about it for the moment because it's crossing this first orbit. If I solve those ones, those ones are knocked out. So it doesn't matter how I do that. I've got to leave that for now. Let's look at a third orbit, this one here. Now I've got to start using the full three turns. So blue, yellow, where is that? Over here. So I'll just set up like that and then do a cycle of those three pieces. that's in and then undo this setup and the reason for doing this is to keep the other pieces that were solved in their orbits still solved this is yellow orange which is around there so one two three i can cycle that across next one is orange blue same thing And that orbit has now become completely solved as well. And I'll look at the last orbit, which has not yet been done, which is this one. So I'll cycle the, the white blue across here first of all, will I? I'll actually, yes, I will. I'll cycle the white blue across here using that piece as my third piece. Have that's done. I'll then try and get the green white in using let's say actually using this piece. And I had a setup back somewhere, which must have been that one. So I'll undo that setup and you can see there's the two swapped edges. Now I will almost certainly have two more and there they are. So you can see I've got two swapped edges here and two here. What I need to do now is attempt to just get these onto the same face to see what's going on with them. So I would initially solve the pink red over here to put all the edges on this face. Okay, so that's done. Now I've got this swap here and this swap here. Well, because I've got the two swapped edges on the same face, all I need to do is give that one twist and they are all solved. So that's the worst that will happen at the end of solving the edges. The next part of the solve is to solve the four colored corners. So these ones here, and this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you quickly now on a solved puzzle how this works. Let's have a look at a sequence here, which cycles these three four colored corners. It's extremely simple. It's essentially an edge piece series, basically a left face and a right face. And then undo, undo. You can see there that it's moved this to here, this to here, and this one, which is the white purple one, back to here. It has also used the triangles, so obviously we've got to use this before we do triangles. All right, so now that we know what we're doing, we just need to search for any corner that hopefully is already in its correct orientation and position. But if not, we're going to put it there. I can I see that one there? Oh, that's perfect. So that green, yellow, orange, gray, you can see that that's going to roll around like that and position and orient correctly. So that's my first piece going to here. My second piece is going along to here. Now I can just get this one solved and not worry about the rest of it if I want, or I can try and place this one as well 
or possibly this one. Let's imagine that I want to place this piece as well. That's a red sticker. I've got to find the position of this piece, first of all, which is here. That red sticker is going to land there, which means that the sticker in the red face of the third piece needs to be there on that grey face. If I can get it there easily, that is what I will do. So let's see, you can see that if I just turn it up like that, no cigar, oh, that won't work. What about if I bring it down here and then turn it up? That, if I remember correctly, was that in the, can't even remember which face that was in there. No, that was not in the correct face. So I was trying to get the green sticker up onto the gray face. So that did not work. So at this point, I'd probably go up ah, too much effort. I'll just place this corner here and get that one done. Because this is such an easy sequence, it probably makes more sense just to do one at a time anyway, if I'm being honest about things. I'll see if I can find another one that is set up, ready to go. I'm not sure. Oh, hang on. What's this one? Yeah, that one will work. So there's a second and a third. Let's get that one home. And ideally, I'd just like a third one done now. So then that will leave me with a three cycle of pieces. Don't think any of the remaining four are correctly set up. So that's good. That'll give me a chance to show you how you rotate them in order to make them work. So here I've got this purple, orange, blue, green piece. And you can see that in order for that to place there, I need the blue sticker to be here on this blue face. In other words, I've got to rotate this clockwise. Now, in order to rotate this piece clockwise before I start, I need to move it about this three-coloured corner in an anti-clockwise direction. It seems counterintuitive. That's what it is. If I want to rotate this clockwise, it's got to go in an anti-clockwise direction about that corner. So not the face turns, but the movement like that. So let's do that. Remember, I'm trying to get the light blue sticker onto the blue face. There we go. No real need to remember the setup moves. I'll show you why in a minute. So that's going to go to here. This one is going to go to here for now. Now it is going to place and orient wrongly, but that's okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. So let's carry out the sequence. Okay, that's in. Now let's undo and I've either got to go to here or to here. If I forget, I'll just try one of them. Does that look right? No. So it must have been the other way. Must mean I have to come down this way. Ah, that looks good. Continue. We're back in business. So at this point, I've got one, two, three corners in place. That will leave me one, two, three corners by the look of it that are not in place. So I've got a corner here that I can now cycle across to there. Now what you may notice already is that I don't actually have a three cycle because that one's in position. It's got twisted. I have this piece going here and this piece needs to come back here. Well that's interesting. Let's firstly get this piece home. So we'll cycle that across. And as predicted, there are now a swap of two pieces. That piece with this one here, the purple, yellow, blue, white, belongs there. The pink, grey, blue, yellow belongs here. Wow, what's happened? Well, this is an interesting phenomenon that has happened because we don't know when we brought everything back together, we have no orientation on these centres. So if I have it like that, I can't tell whether that centre is oriented correctly or not. If I had some markings on the centers originally, it would behave a little bit more like a super cube or a super puzzle, but I don't. And so essentially what's happened is instead of having 
I'm not saying it's that particular center or any particular center, but I've got one of them that's been put out. Now, the way to get around this is I cannot simply turn one face like I normally would. Normally, that's the sort of thing that I would do. But you can see the problem. I've got these two swaps here like I had before. If I turn a second face, which is adjacent to it, now I'm back to where I started. If I turn the third face, I have once again fixed the issue. So let me just undo those and explain exactly what I'm doing here. In order to fix this swap of two of these corners, I am turning the three faces around a three colored corner. Doesn't matter which ones, any three faces around any three color corner. So I'll do these again. One, two, three. Now you'll notice that the edges have come out, but watch what happens here. In each orbit, I'm now able to cycle those three edges home in the way that I did before. There's the first lot. What about this one? White, purple to here to here. There's the second lot and the third lot is here. All the edges are back. What has it changed? Well, this corner, yellow, blue, gray, pink, belongs here. This corner, purple, yellow, blue, white, belongs up there. So there's one swap of corners. So far, that doesn't look like anything's changed. However, I've also got this purple, orange, green, blue, which belongs here and the green, yellow, red, white belongs here. So I've now created two swaps, which is functionally the same as a three cycle. So one swap there, I can't even hold this properly. One swap there, I shouldn't have tried. Two swaps, let's leave it at that. So now I just continue finishing solving these corners. So I'll just find a corner that needs to go somewhere These two are not lined up in a nice way, so let's see if it's simple enough to get. You know what? It is too. This corner here is going to land on here. If I cycle that one to there to there, I'm pretty sure this corner is going to come back and correctly solve. I'm going to take a punt. Let's see if it works. Please work. It worked and that will leave me three corners to do this purple one goes to here the red white green one goes to here and this purple one goes back there now you can see this is correctly oriented to go across to here so i just need to get this third corner to that position so that it is oriented correctly what i notice is that this second corner has the pale yellow sticker and so I need to look down to the pale yellow face and I see the blue sticker on that face. That blue sticker needs to land here before I start. I'm really hoping I can just turn it up like that. If I couldn't, I would need to do a little bit more work of rotating corners around faces like I showed before. But that is now set up. So let's do the last of these. Well done, we'll undo this setup move and you'll see that all of those four colored corners have now been solved. Well, the next stage of the solve is to solve the triangles. There's potentially 24 of them, which can get annoying. Well, at least there's a purple one that's done there. But this is the longest stage of the solve, apart from probably getting your jumbling back if that turns into trouble. But it's not particularly difficult, but it does, you know, it takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to show you now on a solved puzzle two separate algorithms that you can use to get this done. Now the first sequence we're going to look at for triangles is the following. It's basically the corner piece series used on this cube. So the corner piece series normally turns an upper face and then a right face and then an upper face and a left face. So I want to start with this corner with these lines diagonal. 
as opposed to like that. I need to hold it like that. Here I go, upper face, right face, upper face, left face, and then I would turn the upper face and I'd return the right face to the upper face and return the left face. Now they're all 180 degree turns. Now what you can see straight away is that the three colored corners have been moved as well. So if you do this sequence, you've got to do this before using the three colored corners. But as far as the triangles go, it's only moved three of them. So this white one has gone to the front, this green one has gone here, and this yellow one has gone over here. It's very nice and symmetrical movement. And it's essentially the movement is that face and that face. So I find it very simple to see what needs to go where and set up. Now, if you need to do the reverse movement of these pieces, so you wanted the piece to go here to here to here, then you simply reverse that. And the reversal is a really nice sequence in itself because it becomes left, up, right, up, left, up, right, up. So nice little thing there on this particular puzzle. Now the second sequence for moving triangles is a pure sequence. So it will not move these corners at the same time. So this sequence is good if you want to do the triangles last. And it's also good if you want to move a triangle from say here to here on the same face and bring another one from over here because that's the three pieces that it will move. So it's similar. Let me carry it out now. We turn the left face, then the right face, and then repeat that. And then we want to essentially isolate this triangle here and replace it with this one. So we're going to turn the upper face, the front face, and the upper face like that. And that ensures that the other things here were not touched. Now we undo. So we turn the right face, left face, right face, left face, and now we undo the up front up, which is amazingly up, front, up. And you can see at the moment, it looks like sort of one thing only has changed here, but what's happened is the red triangle that was there has moved down to this position. The red triangle that was here has moved across to that position and this blue triangle has come around to the top position there. So this can be quite handy. Most of the time I'll use the first one, but this certainly has its uses. All right, let's now try and find, I like the look of this because it's a blue next to a blue. And that can sometimes be, as in a blue piece next to a blue face, that can sometimes be quite helpful. In the same way I've got a white piece next to a white face here. So, I would just have a look and see if there's anything really obvious set up already. So I'm looking for where these pieces go. Nothing super obvious there. What about this one? No, keep turning. Oh, here we go. There's a grey that needs to come around and place there. So I've got that grey piece set up correctly. This dark blue piece is going to go to here. So Firstly, I would try and see, could I position a dark blue face to there? Uh, unfortunately, it's not in the correct, it's not going to turn across, so that will not help. The next thing I'd do would be to say, that's a purple piece, could I position a purple face over here? And again, I don't think that's easy. So. I just go, cool, I'll just get the grey piece done for now, and that's all I need to worry about. So here we go. And that grey piece is in, you can see the other two have cycled as well. So Here's another example of, I'll get the grey piece into here. It doesn't look at the moment like it's going to be easy, but if I move that grey across to the red face and then put it down here, that's a pretty easy setup 
to think about. Then I can bring the position up to the top. So that's what I would do first, is to say, put the gray over there and turn that red face. So that gray is now in position and then turn the front face. I can probably remember each of those three to undo all that. So I've got a gray coming to here, going to a pink. What's over here? Well, I've got something. And at this point, I don't really care what it is. It's just a piece that hasn't yet been done. So that will do. done and I've got to undo my grey face and I've then got to undo my red face and finally this one. Let's have a look and see if we can use the same algorithm but going backwards. Ah, here we go. All right, so I'm going to move this white piece across to the left orange face and then put it down there. So that white piece is now ready to come and land here. It's going to go to the yellow piece, which is going to go to that position. And just to demonstrate the thing, I'm not going to worry about what the colors are. So I'm going to move the white piece to here. So the piece movement is the opposite. So now I just want to do left, up, right, up, and repeat. Well done. You can see that white piece is placed. Let's undo what I did. And we're back in business. I will do one move of the other pure algorithm. So the one where I've got this piece and these two. So what you'd generally be looking for is a piece that belongs on this face, which is on the left face somewhere, if you can find such a thing. No, how about well that's okay let's do a bit of a setup here so I've got the green I'm going to turn that to the purple face into that position because that green piece is now ready to move to here so I'm going to have the white go to there the yellow go to here and that green piece to come and solve there so let's carry this one out. So it was left, right, twice. And the up face, the front face, and the up face, and then undo. And you can see the green piece has been placed there. If we undo this setup move, things are back where they should go. So that is what we want to do. I'm going to continue doing almost all the rest of them and come back in when the last two or three are ready to be done. Well, I'm back here with four to go. One, two, three, four. And I thought I'd cut in here because this is actually in a pretty nice position here to get at least one of these solved straight away. So I'm going to look at this blue, little blue piece here. I notice the pink piece is down the bottom on the lower face. When I turn that around here, it lands exactly in the position where I need it to be. So I've got that pink sitting here. Now I could straight away go, good, that pink could come this way, so I could do the reverse move. I just need to get another piece here. And because this one is too tricky to get there, what I'm going to do is move this piece around to there and then put this third piece up into that position. So I notice if I look at the three pieces, I've got a light blue, a dark blue and a pink. And what I wouldn't mind doing is getting the dark blue across to there. So I'm going to do the piece movement in the ordinary direction. Now, I just need to undo the turns that I did. I think this was the first one. This was second. And 
and this one was third. I'm either going to have three left now or two. I've got the light blue and the pink, and I reckon that's all there is. This is a pretty nice thing or situation to finish with because if you can just sort of deal with two pieces and be able to use a third of the same colour to get it done, it can often be much easier. And you can see here that I've got this light blue, which will once again turn around into the perfect position on that face. So I've got the light blue here. I can use this light blue piece and this pink piece. So let's turn the pink piece around and then bring the light blue up. So now I just need to say, here's the light blue face. The light blue piece is this one. So my piece movement must be the reverse in order to get these sold. So I shall carry out that reverse now. So that's all done. We now undo those setup moves again. And that will complete the solving of the triangles. So if you do find that you're down to a three cycle of pieces, three different colors, normally the easiest thing is to just try and solve one of them and get yourself to that situation where it looks like you've got a swap, but you can then use the same color to complete it. Okay, well the next stage of the solve, and this is essentially the last stage of the solve, is to solve these three colored corners. And this is so nice, I love this sequence because it is almost the same as the triangle sequence. So let me show you on a solve puzzle. Now we're going to look at moving three of these three colored corners around. And to do that, it's nearly the same as the first triangle sequence that I showed you, the impure one. So here we go. I'm going to repeat that exact same thing as if I'm moving triangles. And now I'm going to not undo it, but I'm going to do the opposite sequence. So instead of starting with up face, right face, I'm going to start with up face, left face. And then repeat that. And what happens is those triangles come back to where they should be, so they are untouched. But these three corners have been moved. And you can see that the red, pink, yellow was here. That red sticker has gone straight across the face. The blue, white, red was up here and the blue sticker has gone straight across the face. And then over here, we had a yellow, green, blue. The yellow sticker was on the side, that has landed on the top. So even the piece movement and what happens with the sticker colors is pretty much identical to the corner piece series on a Rubik's Cube. All right, so that means that what we're looking for here is, if possible, a corner that is sitting on the same face that needs to turn around that face. I'm just having a quick look around. I'm not sure we have any. So I know that that's in position. I'm going to try and find one that needs to roll across. Anyway, here's one. So this white, blue, red needs to go across to here. But in order to make this work, I need the white sticker on the white face. Now that means it needs to rotate anti-clockwise. And so to rotate that corner anti-clockwise, I want to turn it in an anti-clockwise direction about the four colored corner. Where was I going there? That one, that one, that one, and that one. So an anti-clockwise direction about that corner. And that should put the white sticker on the face that I need. There we go. So that is now set up to go to there. That's all I'm going to worry about for this one. And I just need to get a third corner that is not yet done in that position. So I'll just move that across there and remember to undo the pink face first. So let's now carry out the three cycle. So first of all, the same as the triangle cycle. That's done. And then I do I guess the opposite of that. So upper face and then left turn, first of all. Okay. 
Okay, all done, and you can see that corner has successfully been placed. Let's undo all the setup moves. Now I've got to do something with this again. If I forget which direction I'm going, just try one direction. That does not look right. Try the other direction. That does look right. Alrighty. Now that's good. What that's done now is put this one in a position where it's ready to go straight across to there. So I could look, you'll notice that I've got this third corner down here and the white sticker is on the side. Well, that's not really ideal because I don't want the white sticker to go there. So what I could do here is rotate this corner before I begin to place it here as well. And in fact, I think I may even do that. So I need to rotate so that, what do I need on the side? The green, so that needs to go anti-clockwise. So I need it to move in an anti-clockwise direction about this corner. At least I'm pretty sure I do. Who knows, I could be wrong. I think I was right. So that is now positioned correctly. And I'm now gonna cycle those three home. And what you can see is that that one has gone correctly and that one has also gone correctly. I'm now going to undo those setup moves. Again, I can't remember what I'm doing, so I'm going to just see. I think it goes back to this direction. When I do it, that looks right. So I'm going to assume that that is correct. Okay, where are we at? That's in position. Blue, green, yellow goes to there. Green, grey pink to there and the okay so we've got one twisted and we've got a three cycle here you can see that the gray is ready to go across to there so what i might do because that is already in position i'm going to i'd prefer it to be out of position so i can place it in the final three cycle so i'm going to keep this here leave that one there and move this one down to be the third corner like that so all I'm trying to do is get this grey one here placed across to there. That's the first half. All done and I'll undo the two setup moves that I had and let's see what's what I've now got one two three left to go now there is a corner twisting algorithm that I've found which I'm going to put up on the screen right now just so you can note it down pause the video and have a look at it if you want and it will twist a corner here and here it'll twist this corner clockwise this corner anti-clockwise you can see that it's long but it's not that difficult what I'm going to try and do here instead is to cycle home the final three corners. So you can see that yellow, blue, green is ready to go across to here. This corner, I have the pink sticker in this face, which is going to land here. So I want to look at the pink face and I see that it has an orange sticker. So the orange sticker needs to be here before I begin. So I'll firstly just turn it around like that and see if that works. It doesn't, it's got to go clockwise. So if I was doing this normally, I would be rotating it clockwise about this corner. So what that means is I'm now going to move it down to here. So I won't remember that face setup, but I will remember light yellow, green, white. So yellow, green, white are my setups. And what you'll notice is having done that, that yellow sticker is there, which is going to come up to the top here. So that'll cycle home these last three corners.
Okay, so that one's cycled home, so is that one. All I need to do now is get this one back into its position, and I think I had to turn that face, that face, and that face, and then the final one was here. Alrighty, and you can see that that has successfully taken care of those three coloured corners. So I hope that helps. You can see that if you do add jumbling to this, and particularly the shape shifting, it does make it quite a bit trickier than if it was just 180 degree turns. But that is the standard Dodie rhombus. As always, thanks for watching.